Lipa Life is not a tongue-speaking church. What do I mean by that? We believe in speaking in tongues. But some people, and I've seen some of you like that here, if I preach on restitution, you stand up, you begin to speak in tongues. That's foolish. If I preach on consecration, instead of praying and saying, Lord, I offer myself upon the altar, I give myself completely, you, begin, you rise up, you begin to talk in tongues. That's foolish. If I talk on sanctification, and I say your heart must be purified, you stand up, you begin to speak in tongues. If we talk on healing, you speak in tongues. If we talk on rapture, you speak in tongues. Anything that we talk about, we say now rise up and let us pray. You never pray with your understanding again. Paul the Apostle said, I'll pray with my understanding and I'll pray in the Spirit. Both. Not that every time we come to church, every time we have quiet time, instead of having your quiet time and learning from the Word of God, you never learn again. All now is just tongues, 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 tongues. From Portacos. From Calabar. Maybe there are some people from Oweri here like that. You bought all these books of Charles Cabs and Kenneth Egan and Copeland and everybody. And then you feel that the only thing on the world, in the world is speak in tongues. If your preachers here, those who are sitting here, if they tell you that, they are deceiving you. Balance it all. That you understand that it is not just speaking in tongues when your life is dirty. It's not just speaking in tongues when you ought to make restitution. It's not just speaking in tongues when you are tearing apart the church and then you hear the message of the word of God and instead of with tears and crying, speaking with your own voice, your own language, going to God and praying with your understanding to consecrate, you don't do that. And it's not just speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues. You'll be disappointed on the last day. The Corinthians. There were the people in the New Testament that spoke in tongues more than everybody else. It was among them most people died. You know why? All they did was just speaking in tongues. But they were eating the Lord's Supper unworthily. They were not living right. They had problems on marriage. They had problems even with idolatry, with idol worship. They had problems with almost everything you can think about. And there was disunity in that church. And Paul the Apostle told them, Oh, you Corinthians, I cannot speak unto you as unto a spiritual. I thought speaking in tongues makes us spiritual. No, you know you are not spiritual because you speak in tongues and you get angry. You speak in tongues and there are people you cannot forgive. You speak in tongues and yet you cannot control your body. You say, well, this temptation after women is always bothering me. And yet you are speaking in tongues. You are like the Corinthian church. You are not solid. You are not firm. You are not steadfast. All you know is just shake a little and jerk a little and speak in tongues. That's all. And after the speaking in tongues, the evil thoughts are coming back again. What is the sanctification? Two sisters speaking in tongues in the same house, they cannot live together. They cannot sweep the, uh, the, the floor of the place they are living together, only speaking in tongues. You open the Bible, you read, you don't understand. While you are having quiet time, you sleep. When you sleep at quiet time, when you wake up, you begin to rattle out in tongues. Who are you deceiving, by the way? The devil is oppressing you and tormenting you and driving you apart. You don't have victory over sin. You don't have victory over evil thoughts. You don't have victory in your language, in your conversation. You exaggerate, you lie, you talk too much. There's no control, no self-control. The fruits of the Spirit are not there. And yet speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues. Who taught you that? You heard that from me before? Never. It's deeper life, Bible church. The whole Bible. Not just speaking in tongues. The whole Bible. Not just healing. The whole Bible. Not just miracle. There are people now today in deeper life that say miracle, miracle, miracle. What's miracle? What do you know? What do they call miracle? The greatest miracle is being born again. 
And they don't have that miracle. All they are having, they come. I praise God. I came last Friday. I didn't have uh, any five cobble on me. And when I was going out, God gave me five naira. And so what? My friend, go and sit down. Five naira. God gave you five naira. I got a miracle. Five naira is a miracle. I, when I came last Friday, before I came, I was going to toilet. And uh, then I came. They mentioned my problem. And after that Friday meeting, I didn't go to toilet again. Praise God, I have a miracle. Go and sit down. He didn't go to the toilet again. Still smoking and drinking. He's got miracle. His life is not changed. Got miracle. Still beating his wife. Got miracle. Still stealing in his place of work. He's got miracle. Tell them to sit down. Let's preach salvation to them. That ye must be born again. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. When Zacchaeus came and he said, Half of my good I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything wrongfully by wrong accusation from any man, I restore it fourfold. That's a miracle. When that time robber, when he changes, and he gives himself, and he says, Lord, all that I have stolen, I will restore everything. That's a miracle. But the covetous people, they come and they get more money. That's no miracle. But the people whose lives are being changed, the people who are giving themselves to the Lord, saying, Oh Lord, here am I. I lay all on the altar. I consecrate everything. The people that will say, as members of the church, Here I am. I'm a member of this body of Christ. I don't care for persecution. Though he kills me, yet I will trust him. That's a miracle. People that will rise up like Esther. If I perish, I perish. If I lose all my friends, I lose all my friends. If people hate me, that's all right. What I will do for the rest of my life is obeying the Lord in every detail of the word of God. That's a miracle. But five naira. Headache. If that's all the miracle you've got, I don't think we'll meet in heaven. It's a miracle that touches the heart and touches the life. That's why we call this church Deeper Life. Bible Church. The whole Bible. Therefore, as you are going out from today, go back home. Make wrong things right. And if all you have been preaching is half gospel, one quarter gospel, one tenth gospel, preach the whole thing. Teaching them all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Before the last message, rise up and let's pray.